Hey everyone, my name is Christy. Welcome to my corner. Thank you all so much for joining me today for episode one in my natural dyeing series where I experiment with different natural dyes to make more historically accurate embroidery reproductions and, you know, just for fun. But before we get into it, I want to welcome all my new subscribers. Thanks for joining me in my crafting and artistic adventures and welcome back to those of you who have been hanging out with me. It's been so nice to get to know you in the comments here on YouTube and also on Instagram. If you would like to follow me on Instagram, my name is Dr. Underscore Christy, and I'll put that right here and down below. And that's where I post progress on my embroidery projects and other textile crafts kind of every day. That's where I put my baking pictures for bakes that I don't film, which may or may not be historical. I also put pictures of my nails. I do my nails quite a lot. And I like nail artistry. And I also have lots of pictures of my dog. <laughs> so if you're interested in any of those things, please hop on over to Instagram at Dr. Underscore Christy and um, check me out there as well. This is a channel about embroidery and other textile arts and baking and history and the history of those things. And I post two videos a week on Fridays. I post a weekly floss tube video where I update you on my progress in my different crafts. And then on Tuesdays, I post wildcard videos, which are more often process videos where I talk about historical baking or I do a tutorial, or in this case, I do dyeing. So if those are topics that interest you and you're not subscribed, I'd love to have you subscribe and hang out with me. I have never done dyeing with natural dyes before. I have done some dyeing with more commercial dyes that I just got probably writ dye, honestly, but I've never done natural dyes. And so I thought for like my first go in the natural dyeing arena, I would start with a kit. And so I will be starting dyeing with this natural dye kit by Earth Hughes that I got at Woolery.com. And I will put a link to this kit down below and also I'll put a link to all of the fibers and stuff that I got as well and the other materials if they are available. I also did an unboxing of this kit so if you want to see everything that's in the kit I'll put a link to that up here above my sewing machine and you can check that out and see if this is something that you're interested in. In the future I may try out less processed materials so this is all extract and so you can buy these materials in less processed forms and I may at some point try foraging on my own, but I think that is way in the future. And first of all, I'm just going to follow the directions and use the kit. And so that's what this video and the next few videos are going to be about. As I said earlier, I wanted to try out natural dyeing because I want to make more historically accurate embroidery reproductions. And in particular, I want to make more accurate reproductions of this embroidery. And so this is an image from the Bayou Tapestry. And if you want to learn more about the Bayou Tapestry, I talked about it a lot in my second floss. I'll put a link to that right here. But basically, this was an embroidery that was made in 1077. And it uses three natural dyes. It uses matter for the reds. And so you can see here all these reds and rusts and browns. It uses woad for the blues and the different grays. And it uses weld or dyer's rocket for the yellows and the golds. And I really love this embroidery piece. Um, I'm a medieval historian. And in fact, this embroidery piece is why I decided I wanted to start embroidering in the first place. I mean, I was influenced by other things by like my mom and stuff. But this is what really got me excited about embroidery was trying to embroider reproductions of the Bayou Tapestry. And I thought, why don't I take this a step further and use more historically accurate colors. So because these three colors are in this piece, those are the three colors that I'll be starting this natural dyeing series with. In this video, I will scour slash clean the fibers. I will prepare the fibers in a mordant, and then I will dye the fibers with matter extract from the kit. And this is the matter extract from the kit, and it is just a powder. I'll be using two different wools, this Appleton Cruel Embroidery Floss, which is a two ply wool embroidery floss. And this is in color 992, which was as light as I could get. And I will be using Knit Picks Bare Shadow. And this is a 
lace weight yarn. Now each type of fiber requires a different cleaning and a different mordant process with different chemicals. So for the wools, I am just using detergent and water. They also require different mordants. And I have aluminum sulfate for my wool for protein fibers. I'll also be experimenting with one chemical additive and this should change the color in some way. So for the wool fibers, I'm going to add cream of tartar. And the way I'm differentiating these is that I have organized them into 10 yard skeins and they're color coded. So the black coded ones are going to be the, the no additives to the mordant. So just the mordant. And the orange ones are going to be the mordant plus the additive. And each one has three because mordanting is actually a very long process. And I decided that I would mordant it all at the same time. And then that way I could do dyeing throughout the week. As long as you keep it in a sealed container and it stays damp, you can use it up to a week according to the directions. So I have all my materials, including a thermometer gun, labeled spoons, <laughs> so I don't mix chemicals that aren't supposed to be mixed, and my notebook so I can record everything that I do and keep a record of it with a little clipping of the fiber so I know exactly what color comes out and I can reproduce it later. I was actually feeling a little bit nervous about this whole process until I realized that, that the worst thing that could happen is that I spill dye all over myself. And so I wore this shirt just in case that happens or that the dyes wouldn't work and would look terrible. And so I am dyeing in very small dye lots. So it won't be a big deal if it doesn't work. And I can keep experimenting without really wasting anything but my time. But even, even if it doesn't work, that still tells me something. And so that's really good. So I'm gonna make sure I record everything that I do. So first up, I'm going to scour my fiber following these directions from this instruction book. For the wool, I want to soak the cloth or yarn in hot water with my favorite shampoo or soap. I'm just going to use dish soap. After 30 minutes, remove the fiber, rinse it, and extract the water in a washing machine. So let's get started. The cleaning process for the wool was really easy. I just started with this water and dish soap and then I gently washed it and let it soak for 30 minutes. Um, I rinsed it really well and I didn't extract it in a washing machine like the direction said because it's such a small amount. I just did it on this towel and that seemed to work out fine. So that was the scouring slash washing process for the wool which was pretty great. All of the fibers have been scoured and they you know, look like washed fibers and it all went perfectly well. I also put an extra zip tie on the Knit Picks yarn, lace weight yarn, because I realized that I was able, I was telling them apart by their color because they're slightly different in color, but when they're dyed, they will presumably be much closer in color. And so perhaps I should not go by their color. So I put an extra zip tie on the Knit Picks wool. So my next step then is to mordant these two different kinds of fibers. And I'll have to do it in two batches because I only have two stainless steel pots and each fiber is getting two methods of the mordanting. For the protein fibers, for the wool, you use 20% alum to the weight of goods, to the weight of fiber, dissolve the alum in boiling water, Fill kettle with enough warm water, 110 degrees to fill the goods, add the goods, and then slowly bring the temperature up over 45 minutes to 200 degrees for wool. Hold the temperature, cool for one hour, and then rinse. And then keep it damp. So that's the protein, that's the wool mordanting. And I'm glad that this is 20% because, 20% uh, weight of fiber, because I'm using so little fiber for each of these that it is difficult to measure the chemicals and I'm kind of doing the best I can. And yeah, so I'm glad it's a little bit higher percentage because I can actually measure that. So anyway, that is the plan going forward and I don't know if I'll be videotaping or just taking pictures. It's kind of, I don't want to mess around with boiling water and chemicals while holding a phone. That just feels very dangerous to me. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. And I'll be back with it mordanted and then we'll talk about dyeing. Okay, so my two wool 
pots have been simmering at around 200 degrees for an hour and now they just have to rest and then they'll be or cool and then they'll be mordanted mordanted is that a word i don't know anyway i'm going to let them sit and cool until after my date night with my mom which is happening in two hours so they'll probably sit for about four hours and then we will go and do the dyeing process and as you saw in my kind of editing before, I'm just working with the wool. I just didn't have enough time to do the cotton too. So that's, um, the mordanting is, is ready almost. I dissolved about a gram of the matter extract into boiling water that I got from my tea kettle. And then I split it between these two pots and added enough water to cover the fiber that I was going to use. And I decided since I wasn't messing around with the cotton floss that I would maybe try and do the calcium carbonate which was a color shifter for matter. And it did actually make a difference so I'll show that at the end. But the pot on the left is just the straight matter and the pot on the right has the calcium carbonate. They've been cooking in the matter bath for about an hour and so now they're just going to cool for I don't know as long as it takes them to cool the directions say overnight but it's 10 30 in the morning so you know this evening they'll be ready the one on the left is just the matter extract and the one on the right I've added some sodium carbonate to it to um, as you saw to up the pH I think is what it does and the light fiber on top is just cotton that has not been treated in any way so I just figured I would throw it in just for funsies and I don't know we'll check back in eight hours or so and see how it all turns out well it is a couple days later and my first for foray into natural dyeing is complete it wasn't a complete fail I have things that are a different color than they started, which is good. And I did do some experimenting, which I'll talk about in a minute. They're all labeled, um, but I did learn some things and there are definitely things that I would do differently next time. I think dyeing tiny little skeins like this is not a good idea for the most, the main reason is that it's so little fiber that the scales that I have couldn't measure out the dye and the mordant and all that good stuff in small enough quantities that I could be accurate. So I was just kind of eyeballing it and you saw my eyeballing it, which means that this gives me some interesting information, but it's not something that I can replicate later on if I really like these colors. Um, I don't love the colors. They're very kind of peachy, salmon-y, orangey, right? And what I really want is the what I was hoping to get was like a maroon brick red color so I definitely need to experiment more I have more yarn coming but I'm going to work in larger quantities and so that's the first thing that I learned the second thing I learned that I did not do is that I don't think I washed these well enough so I think um, these are not in any way color safe I think that they will run all over the place if they ever get wet again and I could take them off and wash them again which I may do at some point but Honestly, it took me so long to detangle them and put them on these little floss drops that I almost don't want to do that. So that's the other thing that I would do. And this takes a lot of time. And that's the other reason why large quantities are actually kind of nice because it does take a lot of time to do this. Um, I'm three days later and, you know, these were done yesterday morning. So they dried overnight and into today. But this took a couple days just because of my life, right? And we need to use the kitchen and I have work to do and stuff like that. So dying in larger quantities means that you have to die less frequently. So I think that that's um, something else I learned. So those are the things that I learned. But I do have colors and I did do experiments. I used two different kinds of yarn. As you saw, I used the Knit Picks Bare Shadow Lace Weight Yarn. And then I used an Appleton Cruel Thread, embroidery floss, Cruel Floss that I got. And the skein of yarn is slightly thicker, um, but I still think would be good for embroidery. And then I have some skeins of Mora from the Woolery.com on the way. And so I'll show you those when I get them. And so I marked them all and they're all labeled 
So I am going to um, pause this here. I mean, it'll be a second for you, but I'm gonna pause this here and kind of organize these all so you can see kind of direct comparisons between all of the different colorways that I got depending on the chemicals that I use. So give me one second. Okay, so I have eight experiments here and they are the two different fibers. So that's one variable. They were mordant or mordant plus cream of tartar, which was the second variable. And then they were the matter dye um, or matter and calcium carbonate. And so I've put the two together. So this side, this side here is the Appleton wool and this side here is the Knit Picks Bare Shadow wool. And the bottom are just mordant and just the dye, the matter dye. These two here are just mordant and matter plus calcium carbonate. And that one turned out the darkest, the most rust colored. Above that we have mordant plus cream of tartar and just plain matter dye. And then at the top we have mordant plus cream of tartar and matter plus calcium carbonate. And so the conclusion is that the cream of tartar lightens the color, the calcium carbonate darkens the color. And so I think, and they're all looking kind of the same on camera, but I will try and take a picture and insert it here so you can see that there are actual slight differences. I mean, they're not like crazy differences, but there are slight differences. And I think were I able to measure things better, they would turn out better. Now, just for fun, I also just had some cotton floss that I just threw in. <laughs> so this hasn't been scoured or mordanted. It was just dyed with matter. And so that uh, got added into the mix. So anyway, this is my first foray into natural dyeing. And I have been told by people who do this a lot that the extracts that I use are not the most cost effective way to do this, that getting the roots and the leaves and the flowers is actually better. Um, and I think at some point I will do that. But I think for now, I'm just going to keep playing around with this. The main issue that I had was that there was a whole extra set of directions that I didn't see. Um, I thought I was following the directions that were in there, but I had missed some directions. So I do think that my second go will be better. I, um, I'm i going to do a larger batch. I'm going to definitely follow the full directions. That will help. And I think, I don't know, I think that this is a really interesting first experiment into this process. So I don't know if this was interesting or helpful for you. It was definitely helpful for me to better understand these processes because I'm kind of going into this blind. I, I'm i not very good at doing research before I start doing things. I just kind of jump in. I just start doing research first, but I just like playing with things and figuring out what I can do. So I think I'm going to like, you know, do more research and then in the next couple of weeks, play around some more with this. But I, I hope to use these in something um, I may wash them again, um, but yeah, I do hope to use them in something in the not too distant future. I don't know what it is. That's a lot of like orange. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to need eight different shades of orange wool for, but you know, I will, I will try it, but I do think that it is a very useful start. Um, and it has taught me, if nothing else, that um, cream of tartar lightens things. So I probably won't use cream of tartar when I want to do like the burgundy of the Bayou Tapestry, like if when I start going for that. So I think that's it for me. This was a very long filming. And so I'm afraid that I'm forgetting something, but honestly, I don't know what I'm doing. So if I forgot something, I'm sure it'll be okay. I am looking forward to seeing you all for my floss tube on Friday. I just got a really fun box from a friend of mine uh, that I can't wait to show you. And I think that that's it. I hope you enjoyed my first foray into natural dyes. 
Um, it wasn't 100% success, but it at least changed the color of the yarn, and so that's a partial success. If you enjoyed watching this, please, you know, give me a thumbs up and um, post a comment below if you know about natural dyeing and really want to like make sure I don't screw it up again. I'd love to get more advice. If you have a natural dyeing book that you really like um, that I could buy or a website or um, a YouTube channel that you really like that does natural dyeing, I would love to check them out. Um, please put them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and want to stick around, I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. Um, we uh, There'll be more of this, uh, hopefully more successful and more burgundy <laughs> than orange. Uh, and I'd love to have you, uh, you know, stick around and hang out with me. So anyway, with all that being said, um, have a good week. Have a good Thanksgiving, those of you in the U.S. Um, stay safe. Um, I will be back with you on Friday for Floss Tube Friday. And please take good care of yourselves and have a good one. Bye.